So if you don't know about 3D printing tech on Timu, I'm about to put you on. What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So I just went on Timu and I bought some of the coolest 3D printing tech that I think you guys should check out. Some of the stuff included a mini 3D printer. I bought a build plate for my Bamboo Labs X1C some 3D printing filament, and even some storage bags to help keep your filament moisture dry as a bone. So just sit right there while I review some of these tech items and even review my mini 3D printer. This video is sponsored by Timu. They offer so many products on their website from 3D printing to everything else that is electronics from video games and such. The prices are great and affordable and the shipping was so fast, it was less than a week almost. Now the products I'm about to review aren't made by Timu, so they have no control over what I say about these reviews of these products. Thank you guys so much and let's get back to the review. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this silicone mat for my 3D printing pin. So on this silicone mat, you have these grid lines that are recessed into the mat. And then you have a ruler right here that's in inches and then another one that's in centimeters. Minus the grid pattern, you have a grid that's circular and a uh, triangle grid as well. Then you have two straight lines. And what you need to do is you get a 3D printing pin. Now, you can check out my other video that I made on tech items for under, what is it, 40 bucks? And this is one of them. This is a 3D printing pin, and all it does is take regular 1.75 millimeter filament, and you feed it through the little pin, and you can draw different designs. So you're gonna take this pin and you're gonna just set it down in the grooves and fill the grooves with filament. And it's gonna give you basic geometric shapes so you can start building from there. I actually made some of these shapes. One being this triangle prism pyramid thing. And I'm not really good at it, but I've seen some great things online from people using these 3D printing pins. So this is just the start. This is one of them. I use this spiral circular pattern as well. And then I just drew some sticks. But you can take these sticks and you can build different things. So for the price of this, it's pretty cool, especially if you have your own 3D printing pen already. Okay, so the next item on the list is these storage bags. Now these look just like a Glade bag that you buy from the grocery store that's resealable, but they also come with these little air vents and a little label so you can date and label your filament. All you have to do is open her up, like so. You're gonna place your spool of filament inside of it. Ugh. Take one of these seals, you can use your fingers. It's kinda of hard actually, I'm gonna use this. And then you're just gonna close her up. The kit also comes with these humidity indicators. So you're gonna take one of these out and you're gonna slip them in your sleeve so you'll know exactly when your filament is getting moisture inside the bag. Once it's sealed up, you're gonna take your little plunger that it comes with and you're gonna put it over the thing and then you're gonna, you're gonna suck all the air out of it. You're gonna keep going until it's sealed all the way. Right here, I have some that I already sealed up and then I have a plastic spool, I have a cardboard spool, as well as a bamboo spool. Inside the bamboo spool, I have the humidity gauge, it tells you how much it is. Then I added some silicone, some silica beads. These are reusable beads that I also got from Amazon. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. But basically, I 3D printed off a container, and then I put the silica beads inside. On the front side, I have my humidity gauge. Now, when I first put this in here, the humidity read 60% uh, humidity. Now, within an hour, it dropped to 10% humidity. This is the lowest I've ever got on a humidity gauge, but I'm pretty sure that it's better off inside this than it would be inside your human atmosphere. I live in the south, so my spool probably collects a lot of moisture from the humidity outside. With a few bags, I don't leave a lot of uh, spools out. I have maybe, probably 10 spools. This will cover that tenfold. 
Very inexpensive as well for these bags. And I think they're well worth it for the price. Especially if they do keep your, your, your filament dry. So that is a great buy. Also, while I was on Etsy, I also bought some filament because I wanted to try it out. It's very inexpensive filament and they have some really cool colors. This is everyone. I think I'm pronouncing it right. It's E-R-Y-O-N-E. Uh, -E. This is their silk PLA and it's tri-color. And I actually use this filament on my mini 3D printer. Minus the results of the actual printer itself, the filament worked actually really well. And I'm, I'm excited for it and I wanna use it some more. I'm gonna give it another review just on its own. But as far as I can see right now, this filament is really good. I also bought some of their army green filament and I have some ideas that I wanna use for this filament as well. And I can't wait to test it out. But from what I heard from other reviews, this is really good filament and for the price, you can't beat it. So this item I was the most excited to test out. This is a build plate for my Bamboo Labs X1C. I've seen a lot of these online and I really wanted to test these out for myself. On one side you have this diamond pattern and on the other you have a carbon fiber style pattern. But Bamboo Labs likes to have their own ecosystem. They like their own filament, works better with their printer, as well as they like their own build plates. So one of the things that had me worried was, was this build plate going to work for my X1C? Now let me get into it. So for example, Bamboo Labs have these barcodes on the bottom of their build plates that lets the scanner on the printer knows what build plate you're using. That's probably patented because these don't have that. So when you're printing something off, it's not gonna register that the build plate is there or it's gonna think that it's crooked. I tried printing stuff off and what it would do was scan for it and as soon as it scanned and realized that the build plate's not there, it will go off and it will start spazzing out and it would never drop a good layer because it thinks that the build plate is all messed up. I couldn't get a great first layer to save my life. But thanks to Printosaurus on YouTube, but he kind of broke down the process of adding a new build plate. One of the things that I needed to fix was there's a checkbox on there that you can check so you don't keep getting alerts for not having the proper build plate in place. Once I uncheck that, it skipped that process with it alerting me and spazzing out and went straight to printing. From there, I was able to change the build plate type over to smooth, smooth PEI, and then it worked flawlessly from there. And then I just started going crazy printing stuff out. One of the things I wanted to print out was this little fry keychain, and on the back, you can see the actual pattern of the carbon. I thought that was so fascinating. Then I printed off one of my logos with the little uh, coins that I started printing off. Let me know if you want me to start selling these little coins. These are pretty cool, but it has my logo on it. On the back, I have the diamond print. I really like this too. Then, I don't know if you guys can see my arm, I'm a huge Green Lantern guy. So, online, I'm gonna leave the link to this as well. These are the Green Lantern coasters. This is the diamond pattern, as well as the carbon fiber pattern. So for $14, and they have different patterns as well with different colors. I'm definitely gonna get some more of these, and I'm super excited about these. Well worth it. Let's see, I give this four and a half out of five Gs. And last but not least, this is the mini 3D printer. Now this is the 3D by Easy Thread, And as you can see, it's super mini. Let's go by the height, 25 centimeters by, I wanna say 30 centimeters. In inches, we're talking 10 inches by 12 inches. As far as construction, it's a plastic with rubber belts, metal lead screws. The build volume of this printer is 100 millimeters cubed, which is very small build plate. You're not gonna make a full size helmet on this. But I was able to make a mini helmet We're gonna talk about what I built later in the, in the review. So as far as putting it together, 
it was fairly simple. The instructions are really clear to put together. I only needed to use like four or five screws and each piece was able to snap on together. Super simple, very easy. Now loading and unloading filament was kind of difficult. I wasn't too sure how to load the filament. On the side, there's a switch. So as soon as you hit the switch, the temperature starts to kick in and then it'll start blinking right here. There's only one little light to blink. Once it starts blinking, you'll start seeing the feeder screws going and then you can start feeding in the filament. Now the filament is 1.75, so it's the same filament that you use on any other printer. As far as leveling the bed, it's very simple. You have th four buttons on the front. Each button corresponds with each section on the build plate. So the nozzle will go down to that section once you push it. And then you get a regular piece of paper and then you'll level it using these screws on the bottom just like you would any other printer. You go to two and then move to the next spot, three and then four. Once you have it leveled, that's it. That's all you need to do for leveling. Getting the file actually on the thumbstick. So you get a four gig micro SD card and a little flash stick. So you put the card into the flash stick and load it to the computer. Already on the flash stick, it comes with the software that you need to slice it. Two prints that you can automatically print on here, which is a little rocket ship, which I have right here. And as well as a kitty cat that I did not print off. And then it comes with the manual as well as some slicing software. Now for me, I didn't use that slicing software because you're able to use Cura Ultimaker, which I already had on my computer. You drag that file onto your printer and it automatically loads the, the profile for this printer. Then you can just save that profile. Once you have that profile, you'll put on your file as needed and then use it to slice the rest of your, your print off. Now, as you notice on this printer, there's no buttons or LCD screen. So how do you know what's gonna print off first? This printer is already designed to let print off the last file you upload it to your thumb drive. So once you put it in there and you're ready to print off, you just tap the play button and then it'll go through its loading process. It'll heat up the nozzle and it'll start printing the last file. When slicing your print, you only want to use a raft. You don't want to use a brim. You don't want to use anything else. Use a raft because the way it's designed, it's not going to stick to this unless it's a raft. That's what I figured out anyway. If you're having bed adhesion problems, you're probably going to have to re-level your bed, but that's it. I haven't had no problems since from re-leveling the bed. As far as the printer goes, that's basically it. Now let's go ahead and talk about what it can produce and the quality of its prints. The first thing I printed out was this rocket ship. Now for a first print, this came out really well. You can see on the front that it has its seam line and that's it. And then I have a slight, a very slight layer shift when it came to the top of the print. Then I wanted to print out something difficult. That's when I used the Kira Ultimaker slicer and I made this little Mandalorian helmet. This is when we started running into the major issues because this print ran for about six hours for this little helmet. We have a lot of layer shifting and qualities in, in its print. It does not print perfect at all. We definitely have a lot of seam issues, layer shifting, and just filament problems where it looks like it has some under extrusion. Now that could have been, uh, it's snagging. I don't like the way it feeds into the printer. It could, you know, get snagged on something and it just not feed all the way through. Uh, it could have been a lot more other problems with that, but yeah, so we have under extrusion. We have just layer shifting, tons of layer lines. It's not going to be your best print ever. That's what I'm coming across. And my last print that I have is my ghost by 3D Meeks. I'm gonna leave his link down there. He has some amazing prints, but this is his Scream Ghost. Halloween's just coming up, you wanna do that. I actually printed this off in a glow-in-the-dark filament. So the glow-in-the-dark filament is amazing, I love it. But as far as print quality goes, again, 
we have some major layer shifts in the back. Major layer shifts, and then as well as we have the brim actually didn't come off of this one. The print still came off really good, but the brim actually is kind of stuck on there. Now I know I can probably grab a couple of, uh, I could probably grab some snippers and take this off, but there's no need. And now it stands on there pretty good by itself. Quality, I'll give it a, a D or a C. But my final thoughts on the printer is for the price tag, which is around $89. I think I bought it for 80 at the time of filming. It's gonna be a good beginner printer. It's not gonna be the greatest printer. It has its flaws as far as the build plate goes. It has great build adhesion. Getting it off is a little bit of a hassle. I was able to get a little spatula underneath it to try to pry it up, dug into it a little deep. So now I have like a little gash out of it. So you're gonna get you're gonna get what you what you paid for for this printer. Great beginner printer. I wouldn't use it for my armor or to build anything high quality on it, to have fun, to give it to your friends, play with the kids, to learn the process of 3D printing. This is perfect. I'll give it three out of five Gs. So that's my review of everything. What would you want to buy in this option? The go-to for me are these bags and I really have fun with the printer and the bill plate. So the bill plate, I definitely is a must. Five out of five Gs. As far as the storage bags, also five out of five Gs. It's a must have for me. I had a lot of fun trying out all these different items from Timu. They were very inexpensive. Timu is a nice place to buy your 3D printing tech. If you haven't thought about buying from there, you might wanna go check out the site. I'll leave a link in the description as well. And you can check out all these amazing things. They have so many more. They have other printers that you can buy as well that aren't just $89. Where's another place that you would love to see me buy tech from? Leave it down in the description below. If you guys liked this video and you found value in it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and turn on that bell notification so you do not miss my next upload. You guys have been so amazing. And you can watch the unboxing of this in this video right here. For everything else, you guys have a great rest of your day. God bless you. Peace out.